Hello and welcome back to lesson 6 of CNC Lathe Programming. Up to now we've learned how to write code using a sharp corner tool, but in the real world we're going to be using inserts that have a 64, a 32nd or a 16th tool nose radius, depending on the size part we're going to be turning. Now I want to show you the difference between the code that was written for a sharp corner tool and a 16th tool nose radius, and how different that would look. Then I'm going to show you how to use the G41 and G42 tool nose radius command so that you can use the code written with a sharp corner tool and set up your machine tool page to allow you to run that code using any tool nose radius that you have. So let's take a look and see how that's done. Alright, so the first thing I want to show you is as we're writing code with our sharp corner tool that our tool stops at each intersection exactly at the end of each entity at the end of each radius at the tangency point as it moves down the geometry. Now let's take a look and see what a 16th tool nose radius would look like and you'll be able to see that the endpoints at each intersection or tangency point is not quite the same. So having to manually calculate that would add quite a bit of complexity and so therefore the sharp corner would be the preferred method. Let's take a quick look at the ID turning tool and as you can see the tool is stopping at the exact tangency point of each entity making it a whole lot easier to write the code versus using a 30 second tool nose radius and it's hard to see in this example right here, but the stopping point at each entity is going to be in a different location than it would be with a sharp corner. So let's take a look at the code side by side and let's look at the differences. Alright, so here we're looking at a side by side comparison of the OD finishing toolpath. On the left side we're using the sharp corner tool and on the right side the 116 tool nose radius. Now take a look at the X and Z values on the left and the right and how they are different and also the radius value. On the left you'll see the actual radius that is being machined versus on the right it compensates for the tool nose radius on the tool. So you can see that the numbers on the right would be a lot more complex to calculate. Alright so let's take a quick look at the code side by side for the ID work. And here again on the left side we're using the sharp corner tool and on the right side we're using a 30 second tool nose radius. If you look at the geometry portion you can see the Z and X values are different at each stopping point and also again the radius value is different because of the tool nose radius that needs to be calculated. Alright so we have determined that we're going to use the program using the sharp corner tool because that stops at the exact tangency points and intersections. Now let me show you where to put the G41 and the G42 in the code to make the program work with any tool nose radius on the machine. Alright so before we look at the code let's go over three G codes. The G42 is going to be used for the OD tool nose radius compensation. The G41 for ID tool nose radius compensation. And then of course the G40 cancels the G41 and G42. Alright, so let's take a look and see where we put these codes in the program. Alright, so this is the code for the finish pass on the OD. And as you can see the G42 right here is on the very first line as we wrap it into position to start our finish pass. So the G42 engages the tool nose radius compensation and then on the very last move where we retract away from the tool path is where we cancel the tool nose radius compensation. So what exactly happens when we call a G42? Let's take a look at the tool page on the machine and see where it gets this information and what values we need to enter to make it all work. Alright so here we're looking at a tool data page on a Morisiki lathe and if you look here the two columns on the right one that has the R 
obviously is for the tool nose radius value that's where we're going to enter the size of the tool nose radius and then c is the compensation number and if you look down here in the lower right hand corner you can see the orientation that you need to know of the tool and then enter one of these numbers now just looking at these numbers doesn't tell you anything so i'm going to have to show you a different illustration to understand what these numbers mean so let's take a look at that all right so in this illustration you see the same numbers that we just looked at but now you have a visual of the orientation of your tool so for the od turning you can see right here in the lower left hand corner that is the orientation of the tool so three is the number that we put in column c now for the id boring if you look at the upper left hand corner you can see that's the orientation of our boring bar so to apply the g41 tool nose radius compensation use the two in column c so use this illustration as a reference to determine what number needs to go into the c column all right so let's take a quick look at the code for the id finish pass and where to put the g41 in the code all right so here we're looking at the code that is used to finish the id now again on the approach we have the g41 on the line where we wrap it into position right before it makes the finished tool path so the g41 is called at the beginning and then when you retract the tool at the end of the tool path you put a g40 to cancel tool nose radius compensation all right so that covers g41 and g42 tool nose radius compensation if you have any questions Please leave me a comment. I thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.